Hey there, I'm Alan, this is Dirty Teeth, and welcome back to the channel. Last week I posted a video about the Confluence, Salsa's brand new entry-level e-gravel bike. Well, today they've dropped even bigger news in my opinion. It's an e-bike that might open a whole can of worms or possibilities depending on how you look at it. Salsa is basically releasing an e-bike version of the uber popular cutthroat. If you're not familiar with the cutthroat, this is one right behind me that I've enjoyed for many years now. It's Salsa's flagship adventure slash bikepacking drop bar mountain bike designed around tackling the Tour Divide. If you don't know what the Tour Divide is, I've got a handful of videos discussing that as well. Anyway, Salsa has named the new cutthroat inspired electric bike the Tributary. Remember Mike Tributary from the Chicago Bears? Or is that Mike Singletary? <laughs> it's bound to excite some folks and equally bound to raise some controversy at the same time. It's being marketed as a no limit, do all exploration bike, and I've heard the term e bikepacking being tossed around. With the roots of the cutthroat being intertwined with the Tour Divide, you've got to wonder is this going to spark the conversation of a pedal assisted category for that race? Or at least get people seriously pondering multi day e bike adventures along certain sections of the Great Divide mountain bike route. As we'll see, the battery range might still be a little iffy to get through the longest stretches without charging. But at the least, it's getting pretty dang close. And it's probably doable by carrying a couple range extenders. You tell me, could e-bikes on the Tour Divide become a thing? Could there or should there be e-bikes allowed at similar bikepacking events that travel on routes legal for motorized use? I'm pretty sure we'll start to see soon enough. But that's way beyond the scope of this video and I'm not trying to ignite an e-bike debate. All I'm going to do today is give you a first look at the tributary. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the e-bike pros and cons in the comments below. You've got to admit, riding at the effort of a touring pace but going faster than bikepacking race pace could potentially appeal to a lot of folks. Maybe you. Just saying. Regardless of your stance on e-bikes or e-bike packing or e-adventures, the tributary has been years in the making and now that it's finally here, my curiosity has peaked. So let's see what makes it tick. I'll jump right into the details of the motor. We already know that the pedal assisted tributary is heavily influenced by the human only powered cutthroat. Salsa took this battle proven platform and decked it out with a reliable performance line motor drive system from Bosch. This is the same or very similar to the systems you'll find on many high end EMTBs currently on the market. Bosch has been building and refining these motors over the last 10 years. Although limited, in my personal experience, these drivetrains have been very impressive. Lots of torque, smooth power output, and plenty of juice. What this means for the Tributary is a Class 3 e-bike rating that offers assisted power up to 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers an hour. The Bosch motor puts out 85 newton meters of maximum torque and 600 watts of max power. Compare that to the confluence I discussed in my last video with torque at 40 newton meters and 250 watts of power, and this bike is definitely in a different league. The Tributary is a legit drop bar e mountain bike. I should quickly point out that I'm discussing the USA version today. The Tributary will be released in Canada as well, but as a class one e bike. Therefore, it will have different specs, so if you're in Canada, check with your Salsa dealer for all the details. Salsa announced an optional 250 watt range extender and the potential capacity for up to 1000 watt hours of power. I am curious to learn how that can be achieved, but I don't have all the details yet. What has been mentioned is the combined Bosch system weight of 14.3 pounds or 6.5 kilos. It uses a top tube system controller as well as a handlebar mounted Bluetooth mini remote. This is all pretty standard compared to other e-bikes in this class. And so are the range estimates that's also released. They're as follows. Eco mode 72 miles, Tour Plus 45 miles, Sport 43 miles, and Turbo 40 miles. And again, there is an option to boost your range with an extender. This plugs in via the bike's charging port above the bottom bracket and can bolt on the frame at the bottle cage brazons. So basically, the tributary should be able to offer the speed and range to crush a lot of rugged miles over diverse terrain without crushing your soul as much. One important note is the battery itself is hard mounted, similar to the Confluence. Again, Salsa says this adds to the stiffness of the frame by keeping battery doors out of the equation. And it minimizes rattling and failure opportunities. But this also means you can't easily click the battery off to charge it alone. Essentially, you have to plug the bike in. 
For potential e-bike packers, this is something you have to be aware of. It also means there's no option to carry a spare battery and swap it out. For now, you'll have to rely solely on range extenders for big adventures. But that might wind up being the best option anyway, since they're smaller and more versatile. You can simply unclick it from its mount and bring it inside to charge while you're eating a burger. I'm sure somebody's already working on a sick dynamo hub charging system. And figuring out a way to harness the energy output of the higher e-bike speeds and then recycling it back into the battery to increase range. And there's obviously opportunities to power your lights and charge your GPS and other electronic doodads. If e-bike packing really does become a thing, the geeky side of me is looking forward to seeing built-in USB ports and whatever other technical innovations people smarter than me come up with. Only time will tell. While you're stewing on that, I'll switch gears. To address the extended periods of high-speed riding, Salsa tweaked the geometry slightly from the cutthroat. I believe the fancy phrase all the cool kids are using is progressive gravel geometry. With a bike as fast as a tributary, it's gotta be comfy and stable while flying over gravel B-roads or plowing through rugged two-track. The chain stays are the same length as the cutty at 445 millimeters. The tributary is designed around wide drop bars and is optimized for a short 50 millimeter step. It also has a longer reach than the cutthroat by approximately 34 millimeters. Salsa factored this in to make it compatible with flat bar or alt bar conversions, which I dig because it adds even more versatility to the bike. The tributary also has a long front center, which is the measurement from the bottom bracket to the front axle. This keeps your weight a little farther back, which helps the bike from pitching forward during hard braking or when you're navigating over slow speed chunky terrain. The head tube angle on the tributary is 67 degrees, which is two degrees slacker than the cutthroat. On paper, these attributes should make it ride more like a Cadillac and help with confident descending, especially when loaded down with heavy gear. To help with climbing, Salsa went with a 75 degree seat tube angle. This is one degree steeper than the cutthroat. This should help with traction and efficiency on steep ascents, so you can just pop it into turbo mode and climb like a billy goat. The tributary frame will be offered in both aluminum and carbon, and I'll detail the build options in a minute. As far as the frame goes, it's everything you'd expect from a cutthroat on steroids. There appears to be plenty of mounting capacity for bolting on bottle and cargo cages on the frame as well as the fork. It also looks like it might be compatible with bolt-on frame bags. Unfortunately, the Bosch system controller is on the top tube, right where a gas tank would go on a bike packing rig. So this could be a bummer. There's plenty of tire and mud clearance, even more than the cutthroat. It'll come stock with 29 by 2.3s, but you can stuff up to 2.6s in the tributary if you want. This is probably also a good time to mention that the platform is designed to support 120 millimeter suspension forks. And these will come stock on a few of the builds. This is nice as we've definitely seen the swing towards sus forks on bike packing rigs over the last couple years, especially those built up for the Tour Divide. I'm imagining some beefy 2.6 tires on this puppy with a plush fork, and maybe a Jones bar or a Money Light riser bar. Then we're talking about a bike with a completely different personality from what you see here. That could be pretty sweet. On another note, the seat stays and chain stays feature Salsa's Class 5 VRS vibration reduction system. This is the same tech that's been on the Warbirds and Cutthroats for years. In my experience, it does help a little bit from keeping washboard roads from rattling your teeth out. And it reduces body fatigue after long days in the saddle. Every bit helps. I know, I know, by now you probably want to know the build options, specs, and prices, and all that. Hopefully after this video drops, more info will become available on the Salsa website, but here's what I know for now. There's gonna be five models of the tributary, two with aluminum frames and three featuring carbon frames. All the photos I have are of the aluminum lineup, which will be available in April. The teal color option will employ a Shimano GRX 600 1x11 drivetrain and a rigid fork, which I'm assuming will be very similar to the carbon fork that comes on the cutthroat. The price for this model is $54.99. The gray aluminum version will come with a SRAM Apex Eagle 1x12 drivetrain and a suspension fork, which appears to be a RockShox Recon or something similar. It will be priced at $59.99. From my initial photos, it appears that both bikes will come stock with TransX dropper posts, as well as integrated drop bar dropper levers. I also see WTB saddles, WTB center lock wheels, Terravail tires, Salsa cow chipper bars, and an Easton stem. 
Again, these are all preliminary picks, so some of the specs could definitely change. The biggest concern I have right now is limited braking power. Both the GRX and Apex models are specced with two piston brakes. Some of the picks I have show 180 mil rotors and some show 160s. And the Shimano rotors appear to be the resin only version. I'm not sure what the final specs will be, but this is an e-bike with a claimed weight of 49.3 pounds or 22.4 kilograms. So I'd hope for some four piston brakes and some big rotors for serious stopping power on rip and descents. That might be tough as I'm not even sure there's four piston brakes available for hydraulic drop bar levers right now. So you might have to swap calipers and that might require post mount to flat mount adapters and other issues. If you have any info or thoughts, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. But especially with the possibility of loading on even more weight for bike packing, I can see brakes becoming an issue. So we'll see how that pans out. Anyway, while I'm on the topic of weight, 49 pounds is a heck of a lot heavier than the 31 or 32 pounds of the Confluence. But it's also got some thoroughbred horsepower. If you're wondering, it's also roughly double the weight of a Salsa Cutthroat, which is around 24 pounds for the GRX 600 model. But the real question is, will it be twice as fun? Then there's the Carbon lineup, which will be released as 2025 models and become available later this year. No prices have been announced, and I don't have any photos or much info yet. But the three build options are as follows. A Shimano GRX 820 drivetrain with a rigid fork and a gray and orange two-tone color scheme. Then there's a SRAM Rival GX AXS build with a suspension fork in a dark gray color. And the top of the line offering looks to be a SRAM Force XO AXS model. Also specced with a suspension fork and a gray and yellow two-tone color scheme. I know this leaves a lot of questions and I'm sorry I don't have more answers at this time. But for now, I hope this satisfies some curiosity. So what do you think? Are you ready to jump into bed with e-bike packing and a juiced up Lance Armstrong cutthroat? Please share down in the comments. It's just me operating this channel and I try to respond to every one of you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please give it a like and share it with your friends on Facebook. And tell Salsa they need to start sending me test bikes. And I could use a cutthroat to replace Sonny here who's desperately in need of retirement. And thank you so much to you Patreon and channel members that keep this little channel alive. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.